Jackson, the president, was successful, at least his administration, in paying off the debt, less successful in controlling spending. Overall, though, uh, at least by the Polk administration, uh, the debt and spending were on downward trajectories before the Mexican War. So at least in that regard, you know, overall, they were much more successful on the spending issue than Jackson per se. Jackson strategy, really the initial Jacksonian strategy and something that James K. Polk also pursued was, again, reform has to begin with the executive. So why don't we use this presidential veto and start vetoing Congress's internal improvement legislation? The Maysville uh, Road veto um, of May 1830 was actually the Jacksonians, Jackson's first real use of the presidential veto that transformed it. It came before the bank veto, um, the bank bill veto in 1832. And so Jackson's strategy was, okay, I'm going to control internal improvement spending by vetoing things. Uh, unfortunately, it, it, it worked for a little bit, but at the end of his term, uh, spending started to go up uh, as well as internal improvement spending. One, because some of it was just hidden in general bills mm -hmm. that was very hard for Jackson to detect. It's something uh, that's still done today, right? All, all these little things that you just kind of add into a must-pass bill and you can get away with uh, just about anything you want. Exactly. You know, the, 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 the little things in there, um, Jackson, you know, certain internal improvement projects he was supportive of. Uh, then you had a huge increase in military spending during the second Seminole war. Then there was the issue of elections, uh, in 1832 and 1836, the Jacksonians were incentivized to push for pork to benefit themselves, uh, during the election. This is kind of that corruption issue. Uh, but, you know, after the Jacksonian term, after Jackson's, uh, you know, the, the, the first uh, the, uh, the the first presidency of the Jacksonian, so Andrew Jackson, um, the you started to see those more frugal, uh, you know, scruples being pushed for. The Panic of 1837 was a big jolt, uh, really energized the Jacksonians into cutting government spending. A lot of state internal improvement projects had not worked out. Jacksonians realized that, hey, wait a second. Corporate charters combined with government subsidies, that's a recipe for cronyism. It's a recipe for disaster. So Jacksonians, they're supporting general incorporation laws uh, on the state level, getting rid of the chartering system. And in the new state constitutions, they're supportive of, and I think this is very important, they're supportive of restricting states' abilities to invest in uh, internal improvements or to lend money to companies or to invest in companies purchasing their stock, uh, et cetera, right? So to try and separate the government from um, uh, getting involved in businesses. Now, as the 1850s uh, showed, uh, there were loopholes, particularly regarding uh, giving land or having the federal government give land to states that they can then give to companies, and but that's a whole different story. But the Jacksonians, they at the state level and the federal level, uh, after the Panic of 1837, they were really good at fighting uh, government spending and continuing to pay off the debt. Okay, the uh, Van Buren was good on this. He was very frugal. Uh, so was John Tyler for the most part. And then before the Mexican War, uh, Polk was very good on this. And Polk, uh, his famous veto was this Rivers and Harbors veto bill. Uh, excuse me, this Rivers and Harbors bill that he vetoed that was supposed to benefit the West. And he vetoed that. So the Jacksonians, initially, they they weren't as successful in reigning in government spending, but they still were able to get the job done, which I think is uh, admirable. And it shows you that, again, it might take several presidential administrations, but if you're slowly chipping away and you've got your eyes on the prize, so to speak, and you don't get distracted, uh, you'll be able to make progress, okay? And this is the Jacksonians, yes, yeah, so they were, they were successful in this regard. I do think a big thing was, uh, obviously, regarding any of this, Henry, William Henry Harrison, he was a Whig, he won in 1840, but he died. And you pretty much had an ex-Jacksonian, John Tyler, running the show, who, although split with Andrew Jackson over executive power, all of his greatest policies from a libertarian, anti-crony perspective were basically just presidential vetoes. So he was kind of doing the Jacksonian strategy, right? So it was just four presidencies of the Jacksonian strategy uh, reformed through the executive. And I think that's really important. It's successful with central banking, successful with protective tariffs, and it is successful with government spending and internal improvements.